now we're going to start with our integration. Okay, so I think most people, including like year 10 students who are like interested in integration, would know that integration is the opposite process of differentiation. So it's also known as finding the antiderivative. And to all you fancy schmancy people out there, it's known as the primitive function. Okay, um, so the, if f of x is like the function that's given and we need to find the integral of it, then we notate that as big F of x, okay? And the integral um, symbol is this weird S, which I personally really struggle with drawing on a screen or on paper as well. Like occasionally it'll look really nice, but a lot of the times it looks kind of ugly. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so there's two different kinds of integrals. The first one that we'll go through is the indefinite integral. Okay, so it's not set bet between two bounds. It's just a function and we're just going to integrate the function and find the reverse of the differentiation. Okay, um, then we have the definite integral. Definite integrals are really useful when we're trying to find the area bound between two limits. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. And the definite, the indefinite integral just has this weird S and the definite integral when we have those two bounds, we'll write between A and B, whatever that A and B might be, okay? Those two limits. Okay, let's continue on. So when we differentiate, um, we need to remember that like, let's say even in the example of like, when, actually, there's examples here. So when we differentiate any constant, it, it becomes zero. It's get, it gets taken out of the equation for the differential. So when we integrate, we need to somehow bring that back in, which means there's a family of answers which can be like um which can be shown with this arbitrary constant called c. Okay, so when we integrate something, let's say 2x, um, I'll go through how to integrate in a sec, but it'll become x squared, and then we throw on a plus c. Okay. Every single time you need to add a plus C. It's one of the biggest mistakes as well as like more common than forgetting the quotient and the chain quotient and the product rule together. Um, forgetting the plus C, instant loss of marks and it's really annoying, okay? Um, so let's start with the basics of integration. Now a lot of us, let me go back to that poll. A lot of us have not done integration. Let me show. How do I go back to the results? Oh, that's a bit annoying. I don't know how to. That's okay. I just remember that a lot of us did not go through it. So I'll go through this really nice and slowly, okay? Um, yeah. So let's get started. So just as when we differentiate um like x to the n, we get n times x to the n minus one, right? Now we're going to do the complete opposite. So I'm, I'll write it here. So d dx xn is equal to n x n minus one. Okay. Now we're going to do the complete opposite. So to to reverse that whole thing, I need to number one increase the power instead of subtract the power like I did over there. So I'm going to sub increase what by one, add one instead of subtract one. And then because I times this down the bottom, I need to divide, okay? So it's going to be x to the n plus one all on n plus one. And because it's an indefinite integral, I need to chuck a plus c, okay? This is on your formula sheet and I want to, just need to check this out actually. Yeah, it is. It's just got a bit more fancy terms. I want to go through this with you guys on the formula sheet as well. All right, page three, right hand side. It's the very first one. Okay, so it's a bit more fancy terminology, exact same thing. Um, I personally would like for you guys, if you're going to like familiarize yourself with anything, this is the one to familiarize with because um, it's used a lot more openly than just x to the n. Okay, so 
let's go through this one as well then. So if we have any function to the power of n, then we need to also have the derivative out the front because um, we're doing the antiderivative, right? So we need to have, the, it's kind of like the reverse chain rule. So we bring that back in and then we times by one on n plus one and then increase the power by that by one as well. Ah, now it sounds really complicated, but I promise you it's a lot easier than what I'm saying. Um, okay, and now what happens if we have one on x? So if n is minus one, then I think you will recall me saying that to take really, really good caution of the derivative of ln x. If you remember what I said, I said that it's one on x, right? The derivative of ln x. And that's because a lot of people get stumped by looking at the integral of one on x. And it's just the antiderivative of that. So more importantly, let's go back to the formula sheet. Let's take a look at this equation. Exact same thing over here. So the integral of the f dash of x on f of x um, will get us ln of the function or plus c. Okay. Ah. Okay, then we have our trig identity, well, trig um, functions. So just as the derivative of sine x gets us cos x, the integral of cos x gets us sine x. Um, integral of sine x gets us negative cos x, and integral of sex squared x gets us tan x. Um, now, I think it's super important that we take a look at the signs because another fatal flaw of many HSC students, I personally can say that in a lot of my like textbook homework exercises, I'd always stuff it up as well. Um, just the signs, so the negatives, the plus, the positives, um, and that's because you just get a bit like overwhelmed by the differentials and then the integrals. And then when you differentiate cos, it gets minus sign. But this time when you integrate cos, you get positive sign. So um, while you're still learning and while you're still going over your textbook and stuff, um, once you do get to this, I think it's super important for you to just go back to your formula sheet, make sure that you're doing the right sign, like the positive or the negative. Um, and just be conscious of that because that's one of the like big silly mistake slip ups that you can definitely have. Okay. Um, now we have the exponentials. We have e to the x similarly gets us e to the x plus c or better yet, because I don't know why we've made it a bit more simple, but if we have the derivative of that exponential function times e to the f of x, it gets us to e to the f of x plus c, okay? And then this one over here, just like how I wouldn't bother memorizing the derivative of this in, um, in differentiation, I wouldn't bother memorizing the integral of this either because it's on our formula sheet already. And um, I don't think I've received many questions on this at all. Okay. Um, we're gonna get to a question in a sec, but just a little bit longer so um those were just the base forms so just as i was saying before um we have like other functions as well like functions within functions the the reverse process um that we actually use is known as the reverse chain rule so if there's a function within a function um then you'll see in pretty much all of these we need the derivative of the function on the outside yeah, so that is like the reverse chain rule. So the main form that you'll get your integration will be as a reverse chain rule integration. Okay, so if you're not super confident with your chain rule, um, I think I saw a question about what you should do in the next two weeks. Um, like getting confident in the chain rule should definitely be one of those things. Okay. Okay, now this is everything that um, the reverse chain rule has. If you wanted to take a screenshot of that, you can. If not, then it's like a lot of the things in the formula sheet on the page three right hand side. You'll see it all. Um, but yeah, we will move on to a slider question. Okay, I've just put it up. So the question is, what is the integral of x plus four 
all on x squared plus 8x. Okay, take a minute to think about this. Um, have your formula sheet on hand or on Google and get that to help you because it's definitely a tricky one, especially if you are yet to have done integration. Okay, some of the answers are coming through. If you still haven't gotten it, that's okay. I'll give you a few more minutes. Take your time. Okay, I'll give you one more minute and then we'll start going through everything. Okay, let's get started. We've got quite a few responses already. Um, how about, I'll start going through it. Once you've gotten the kickstart that you needed from me, um, try and like just mute me and try and go through it yourself, but I will continue going through. Okay, so this one is a tricky one and it's one 
formula that I have tried to emphasize the most so far. Um, but let's try and like see how we can approach this question before I like, throw in the formula and say this is how you do it. Um, so just looking at this, one way that we could think is mm, maybe we can like simplify the fraction. Maybe we can go x on x squared plus 8x plus 4 on x squared plus 8x, right? And then we'll like take out the x over here. So it's 1 on x plus 8 plus 4 on x squared plus 8x. Still doesn't help me because I've still got this disgusting stuff happening. So it's not good enough for me. I can't simplify this. Then I'm taking a look and there's an x on both sides. And there's like kind of a little bit of a similar pattern going on. So I'm going to take a look at the denominator first. The denominator, I'm going to call that f of x. It's equal to um, x squared plus 8x. And then I'm going to take a look at the derivative of that. So f dash of x is equal to 2x plus 8. Okay, now as I look at the derivative of that, I'm taking a look at the numerator. And it looks gosh darn similar. If I were to times 2 over here, and then throw a half up the front, which I'll go through in a sec, um, it'll look the same, right? That's the derivative on the original formula. And what's the integral of the derivative on f of x? Is it not the ln formula? Is it not this one right here? It is. So um, we've just run into a problem though. So I need to times this by 2. But I can't just like times something by 2. Like I can't just get numbers out of thin air. The way that I can fix this is if I just times by a half on the side. Okay, so it's like timesing by two, but then if I times by a half times two, I'm timesing the whole thing by just one. So it just cancels itself out. So to get the final answer, it will be a half ln, and then let's go back to the formula. It's just ln of fx in absolute value brackets plus c. Okay, so x squared plus 8x plus c. And that is my final answer. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everyone. Um, and good job.